Hi, and welcome back to my channel. This episode is entitled, Spiritual Warfare is Not a Game. Almost daily, I attempt to spend time in the word of the Lord. And almost always, I am led to pray beforehand. Afterward, I open the word and almost always, my prayer is confirmed to be of God guided by the Holy Spirit. Because of this, I know that his will and purpose for my life will prevail. This will resonate with those who have a true anointing over their lives. Now more than ever, I understand that we truly are in spiritual warfare. God's presence is so powerful that people will tend to remove themselves from your company. Recognize that you need to put on the full armor of God. This can only be attained through intimacy with him, meditating in his word. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And that's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 4 of the King James Version. As written by John, the light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness did not understand it, or overpower it, or appropriate it, or absorb it and is unreceptive to it. And that's John chapter one, verse five of the Amplified Version. Not only did they reject it, but found it irrelevant, inopportune, and unfitting. People say that they want to know God and have a relationship with him. But can you handle the isolation that comes with this? Malevolent spirits are aware of you and they will shun you or worse. Trust me when I say that even if the person does not know you, the spirit that dwells within them knows when you are of God. This is increasingly evident in your walk with him. Let me confirm this. It is written, then some of the traveling Jewish exorcists also attempted to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I implore you and solemnly command you, now pay attention, by the Jesus whom Paul preaches, seven sons of one named Sceva, a Jewish priest, were doing this. But the evil spirit retorted, I know and recognize and acknowledge Jesus, and I know about Paul. But as for you, who are you? Then the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them, subdued all of them, and overpowered them so that they ran out of that house in terror, stripped naked and wounded. Acts chapter 19, verses 13 through 16 of the King James Version. Many are not understanding the dangers of attempting to confront and even access these spirits without God's protection. With fiend love for Jesus, and beguile and deceit in their hearts, looking to be honored by men, inviting hostile and demonic beings into their lives. In the end, they are taken over, possessed by the thing that they are attempting to conquer and eventually destroyed. You must remain humble as you become more aware of this phenomenon because the flesh fights within you every day to be exalted and recognized. Pride is malignant and cancerous. This is why Jesus told the disciples, 
listen carefully. I have given you authority that you now possess to tread on serpents and scorpions and the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy, meaning Satan, and nothing will in any way harm you. Now heed the warning. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. And that's Luke chapter 10, verses 19 through 20 of the Amplified Version. And what is becoming more prevalent every day is that people proclaim to know Jesus, but they don't. So many claims to be pastors, prophets, clairvoyants, and more. But what is missing other than flattering words of affirmation is the actual word of the Lord. This adulation is worded as such that it emboldens people to believe that they are gods over their own lives, in control of divine decrees and the afterlife or their eternal resting places. Remember, spiritual warfare is incarnate and irrefutable. Heed the ominous. Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day when I judge them, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name and done many miracles in your name? And then I will declare to them publicly, exposing them for all to see. I never knew you. Depart from me. You are banished from my presence. Now hear this. You who act wickedly disregarding my commands. And that's Matthew chapter 7 verses 22 and 23 of the Amplified Version. For this very reason, you must be okay with being set apart. If you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own and would treat you with affection. But you are not of the world. Pay attention. You no longer belong to it, but I have chosen you out of the world. And because of this, the world hates you. John chapter 15 verse 19 of the Amplified Version. Remember this word, and let me specify that this is not saying that everyone who, everyone is called to be a prophet, but I just want you to take this into the context of God's feelings and his grace for you. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 5 of the King James Version. Thank you for joining me. And remember, I am always coming from a place of love. Thank you.